Hi guys, so today we are here with my sister Ida. She is a professional bassoonist, so Miss Jankovic and I wanted to um, ask her some questions about her instrument, how she got to be a professional bassoonist, so that you guys can learn about that instrument. All right, so the first question is, when did you start playing bassoon? I started playing bassoon when I was 16, so just before my sophomore year in high school. And why did you pick the bassoon? Well, my band director said that I had to play a different instrument if I was to be in the better band. There were two bands, one not so good in high school and one really good one, and I wanted to be in the good one. So he gave me a choice. I could choose oboe, bassoon, French horn, or clarinet. He didn't have many clarinets that year. And I chose bassoon because I thought it sounded interesting. And he picked, and you had to choose a new instrument because he already had enough of that instrument in the new band, in the right, good band. Right, right. All the spots in the good band were filled. Now, the people want to know, are you just a bassoon player or do you play other instruments as well? I dabble. So I started with piano and saxophone and I do sing a little bit, but my main instrument is bassoon. So I'm very much an amateur with the other instruments. <laughs> All right, so the next question is how did you become a professional bassoon player? Like, that doesn't happen overnight, so how did that happen? You're right. Well, in high school, I decided that I really love music, and I didn't really find another subject that interested me as much as music did. And at the time, I was really enjoying the bassoon, so those two things together, the love I found for music and me playing the bassoon, they came together and I decided to go to college for bassoon and just kept going. <laughs> so you went to college at D West Virginia University. Yes. And that was your undergraduate degree, so that was four years, right? Yes. And then you got your master's degree, which was two years, mm -hmm. and that was in North Carolina, and she... she Played with a new teacher, right? Right, right. And then you went to Italy. Yes. And you studied under another teacher for three years, right? right. Mm hmm Okay, so that's four plus two is six plus another three is nine years of school and learning how to play under different teachers and practicing yeah. to become a professional bassoon mm -hmm. player. Oh, also... Did you play in any orchestras or any ensemble groups through then, or was were you just practicing by yourself? Oh, I, um, part of being a musician, especially um, an instrument that only sounds one note at a time, think about piano. You can play many notes at one time for piano, and so a lot of time piano players can play by themselves. But me, not so much. I can only play one note at a time, just like you sing, just one note at a time. And so I really sound better with other instruments and other musicians working with me. So a major, major part of my education was to learn how to play with other people and make music with other people because it's actually very complicated but also very fun. <laughs> okay, so we know that the bassoon, from what you just told us, that the bassoon only plays one note at a time. Right. Can you demonstrate that for us? Okay, so I'll play some low, low notes. Ready? Okay, now I'll play some high notes. Where does the um, sound come out? Is it at the top? Well, you would think that I could shoot the sound directly out the top of the bassoon, but that's not how it works. Actually, the sound comes out right in this area because that's where the instrument vibrates the most, and mm. vibrations create projection, and that's where you hear the most sound. But 
the way my ear goes is it starts here. See the tiny reed? We'll show you. There's my tiny reed, okay? And it's a double reed because I play bassoon. I'm a double reeded instrument. You can see one and two. One on top and the other one on the bottom, okay? So then it, it, it sits on here. This is the vocal. I put it on and my ear travels through the reed into the vocal. Down, 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 down. Here, I can take this off. Oh, look at that. You can take that off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it becomes a tube. See, you can see the tube. So my air goes down and then it goes around. Let's see from this angle a little bit. Okay. Like that. There we go. It curves. My ear comes around, and so all, all the all the notes that I just pointed to, all these ones, they're higher notes. When the air loops back down around and comes out the other side, see like this, out the other side. Those are for lower notes, because the longer the instrument, the lower the pitch. Oh. Okay. That makes so much sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so air goes from here, down, around, and back out. But what are all these buttons for? And, like, do they, how do you change the note that you're playing? Right, the buttons and holes that I have change the pitch of the note. So, essentially, we're changing the length of the tube that I have. Oh. If you, yeah, <laughs> if you think about this as one big, long tube, these little buttons... Are these little buttons or holes? See, these are holes, okay? And when every time I cover a hole, it makes the tube longer. When I lift up my finger and uncover a hole, it makes the tube shorter. So it ends basically above the hole. And it makes the bassoon um, shorter in length and therefore higher in pitch. And that's how I change pitch. Yeah. Give us a run. <laughs> Okay, also, let's do one where it's, like, really close to your hands when you're doing it. Okay. Yeah. There's my thumb keys. What's this thing? This is to keep my right hand in the right place. So with bassoon, um, there's a tendency to not really know where to put your hands because, as you can see, it's a big instrument, right? And so especially for a right hand, it can kind of um, just migrate around and not find the right place to land. So with this little um, hand rest, we call it, or crook, in England they call it a crook. Crook. Um, it lets my hand just rest there, and then I know what to do. Brilliant! <laughs> Alright, so we know all of the really cool things about how the bassoon works, and we know how Ida got to play the bassoon, but as a professional bassoon player, what do you do every day? Like, what does that look like? That's a good question. Well, while I'm in school um, and while I'm studying, I usually play about three hours. So I practice scales like I just played for you, arpeggios, which sounds like these. Those are arpeggios. I practice those too. You skip, you skip notes, right? And then I play etudes, which are like exercises for bassoon, and they help my fingers be better, and they help my technique. And then I work on repertoire, which means the solo music that has been written for a bassoon. And that takes a long time, too. <laughs> I have lots of work to do on that. And then I might also work on 
some pieces maybe that I'm learning for orchestra. So my orchestra part that I need to be responsible for and learn. Or maybe I'm playing in a woodwind quintet where there are five players and I'm one of the five. I have to make sure that I know my part. So I might be working on that too. So in my daily life, I probably have um, one of each of those kinds of music that I mentioned and I'm working on that. And also, every day I probably look at reads a little bit. Some days, yes, my, this is my read, remember? Uh, I have to make these. So some days I just do a little bit. Maybe I look them over and I decide which ones I like better, which ones I don't. Some days I really work a lot. Let's take this apart. So we moved over to where my reed making equipment is, okay? So remember, this is my reed, my tiny reed. I make these. And these are the machines and tools that I use almost every day to work on them. So like I said, some days I don't do so much work. I, maybe I'll pick out, because look, I'm always working on them a little bit. I'll pick which ones I like. And that way I know which ones I can use to perform or which ones are better maybe to, for just practicing. Or there are some reads that are better for rehearsal. It just depends. And other days, I will actually make the reads, which is a longer process. And those days, maybe I have more free time. So those days, I'll be work using and working with this big machine. See this? <laughs> a toothbrush. <laughs> this machine has some, a bunch of moving parts. And it takes the cane and makes it the thickness that I want. And all these two tools do different things that I need the reed to do. So with a knife, it makes the cane a little thinner. With my pliers, I can move these little tiny wires on the reed. Oops! <laughs> oh dear! I can move the wires on the reed and make them the thickness or the um, tightness that I want them to be. So it just depends. Each day is a new day. <laughs> do you do those three hours of practicing all at once? No, no. Um, I usually take breaks. So often I do a session, I call them, for 45 minutes. And then I'll take a 15, 20-minute break, and then I continue. Because it's very hard to concentrate for that long, if you can imagine. And if I'm feeling a little tired or... I'm not concentrating so well that day, maybe I'll do 20 minutes or a half an hour, and then I take a break. And then it's easier for me to get work done because I'm also resting in between. We always have to do that work and rest, work and play balance. <laughs> so Ida has her music here, and she's going to play something fast. She's going to play us something slow. So this is famous and it's by Mozart. <laughs> Especially during the slow part is it helps me think about the way my air is moving or my breath through the bassoon and it helps me keep my air going so sometimes I forget to use as much as I need because look the bassoon is big and I have to use a lot she's a small person <laughs> so if I don't remember to use enough air then it's like a car without any gasoline it doesn't go <laughs> so without the air and without my movement, the music just doesn't happen as well. Mm -hmm. 
Ada. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, guys, now you know what that noise is in the background when we are having class. That's Ida practicing bassoon. Yep. So, yeah. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for listening.